Hello, and today I'm going to be talking about back attacks in this video, which is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. More of that later. What is a back attack? I imagine some of you may be thinking, well, I think actually it might be a term invented by gamers to describe something which they believed represents an historical reality, and I'm going to be arguing that I think they're wrong. Um, a back attack is when one man getting the worst of a fight, perhaps, decides to turn and flee, and his opponent has an easy time of killing him. He just sees this turned, exposed back that is undefended, and he just stabs to victory. Um, I don't think this actually happened very much. Uh, what am I basing this on? Well, I've actually done quite a lot of reenactment and uh, live action role play. Yes, even live action role play, I think, actually does illustrate this. I wouldn't uh, set much store by live action role play in other circumstances. I don't think it tells us very much about how people fought in the olden days. But actually, on this one, I think even live action role players might think, oh, yeah, that never actually does happen, does it, in a real fight? Well, and also, I've seen quite a bit of film of uh, of people fighting um, football hooligans, for instance, and um, uh, the very, very rare occasions you see people uh, actually genuinely fighting with, with swords and so forth. Um, and I don't see this ever happening. I've never known it happen, and I think it's something that's made up by gamers. Um, but perhaps the idea has permeated more mainstream society, and a lot of people think, oh yes, the back attack is a thing. And I'm here to say that I don't really think that it's a thing. So, imagine the situation. One man has come forward and he says, aha! You see, he's not tremendously articulate. Uh, if words were his, his weapon, he would have become a poet or a politician. He just says, aha! He has no one writing his dialogue, and to be fair, he probably doesn't actually speak the local language. Uh, and another man, uh, he, seeing his opponent having squared up to him, he says, aha! Well, it's only polite. Um, and so the two men are at what distance? Well, they are, I would say, just out of striking distance. They can't actually hit each other. That is the distance that people naturally come to a halt. So, um, I've got, say, a spear. So, I almost get to the distance where I can spear you. Uh, but then, of course, as soon as I make the threat of going to spear you, you become quite active. You start getting all hostile and unreasonable. And so perhaps I hang back a little bit. And you are in the same situation. You, know, you can see that I've got a spear. Uh, it's not a stealth spear. It's, it's, it's a physical object that you're quite capable of seeing. So you can... By the way, I'm talking about uh, ancient and medieval uh, melee weapons and so forth, not modern uh, fights involving machine guns and the like. So. Um, you can see my spear, so you can see what reach I've got. So you know what appropriate distance to stand away from me to keep yourself safe is. So um, there is this ideal distance. We've seen it. Uh, you watch a boxing match, for instance. Um, the two boxers don't just stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, smashing each other, both within easy punching distance of each other, over and over and over again for round after round. That's not how boxers fight. Yes, occasionally they're getting close, and one man, man might throw a combination, and his opponent, rather than running away, might throw a combination in, in return. But that's fleeting seconds. Almost the entire bout, they're outside punching distance. Uh, just as I'm, I'm outside punching distance from this microphone that's just uh, just below the camera here. I can't actually reach it. So in order to to hit that microphone, I have to step in, and then I can then I can get that microphone. Um, but actually, I can't reach it. And this is the the distance that I would fight a microphone at, um, at least a microphone that I feared might fight back. Uh, so you stop at that natural fighting distance, which is just out of weapon reach. And so, if you want to run away, you can, because the other guy can't hit you because he's out of reach. Now, clearly you have to pick your moment, uh, and you might even create a moment. You might, for instance, feint an attack, causing the other guy to whoa, get a, a defensive stance, and then you leg it. Oh, he fooled me. That's a very easy uh, way to do it. But actually, uh, you can just withdraw very slightly and then leg it. You might, because you might be withdrawing, you see, in order to launch an attack, but he doesn't know that. So you withdraw slightly and then buy, and oh, he can't get you because you're out of reach. Now, there is a complication, and that complication is, yeah, you guessed it, other people. Other people, eh? They're so. Uh, why don't they just let us duel? But real fights tend to involve lots of people. Now, in a massive battle, of course, we have very large numbers of people, but even with a skirmish of just, say, five a side, there will be a front line. 
In Hollywood, they quite like every man to pair off against every other man and everyone fights simultaneously because you, you can fill the screen with action. But in real fights, a small proportion of the total number of men involved are at the front are fighting and the others are backing them up, perhaps leaning over their shoulder going, yeah, if they're football hooligans. So when you see the video of Millwall supporters taking on, I don't know, Chelsea, whoever it is, um, they don't just they don't just interpenetrate and all pair off and all fight. There's a line forms and each man at the front, the guys with the most bravado who want to just impress all their friends by apparently being the keenest for a fight, they're saying, come on, come on, come on, come on. And if they step just one step forwards of their line, they, they feel the extra amount of danger they're in. And if anyone then threatens them, they can whoop, step back. Now, why do they feel safe? Well, if I lunge for you and you flinch, get out of the way, create a gap, I could, ha ha, having seen that you've created this gap, I could charge into that gap. Unfortunately, if you if you feel lots of Chelsea supporters and you're incredibly, sorry, I don't want to say that Chelsea supporters are very, uh, very uh, aggressive or anything. I'm not saying anything about either Millwall or Chelsea. Uh, they're just examples of f football teams. But anyway, um, I pile in uh, uh, into the gap. I'm now surrounded, aren't I? And it doesn't matter how good I am at fighting. If 20 guys just leap on me all at once, it's over for me. And in a real fight, uh, where we've got weapons, we've got swords, we've got shields and spears, and we're trying to kill each other, the situation is pretty much the same. I'm not going to just pile into a gap uh, to chase you. If you turn and flee, I'm not going to charge after you because I'm charging into tremendous danger. Even if your line is only one man deep, if I charge through a gap in your line after you, I am now surrounded, cut off from my fellows. Is that what I want? No. Um, so other people make it incredibly unlikely that people will charge after you. So if you want to get away from from uh, an opponent, you can probably do so in almost certain safety. I say almost certain. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a back attack actually happen, except possibly if someone turned and immediately tripped over or something. Assuming that nothing extraordinary like that happened, I don't think I don't think I've ever actually seen it because people are not complete idiots. If what you want to do is run away, you can pretty much always pick your moment and run away in safety or do something like a faint attack, create a moment and then run away in near enough perfect safety. Also, if there are two men fighting one, then one of the two men can near enough always break off because he knows that the other man fighting remains a threat to the guy. So the guy can't just chase after you, chase past him because he's got a guy to get past. So um, if, um, if I'm fighting you and I've got my friend here and, uh, and there you are and he decides to, to run away, if you just charge after him, I'll just, I'll get a back attack on you. Oh yeah but you're not going to expose yourself like that, are you? And people don't, when they're running away, expose themselves anyway. Uh, the guy running away doesn't actually run away like this, doesn't sort of turn his back and then move. That's just ridiculous. Um, if, he's got a, if he's got a shield uh, in front of him, then he's going to leave that in front of him, isn't he, as he turns to move. If he's got a weapon and you charge after him, he's going to he's going to stab with it. He's going to he's going to create some threat, something that you have to defend yourself, and that is going to just give you that, that little moment of hesitation, and he'll get away, assuming that you're of reasonably similar movement rates. So, um, people don't j fight and then turn on the spot and run away because they're not idiots, is what I'm suggesting. So. Um, I should say a word about our sponsor. Now, The Great Courses Plus uh, is an online resource of loads of lectures from uh, uh, prestigious professors from around the world, although I do notice that most of them are uh, from America, and uh, they present uh, lectures, courses in history and science and oh, loads of other things, but uh, history and science. I mean, you're, if you're watching this channel, you're probably into things like history and science. Uh, I noticed, for instance, that they've got uh, uh, a whole series of 24 lectures on great military blunders. Ah, oh, we all love a good military blunder. Although I do notice, looking at the list, that nine out of the 23 battles that are featured are British military blunders. Now, 
I know we've had uh, some absolute corkers, but I don't think the British are actually responsible for nine twenty-thirds of the world's military blunders. Um, I think it's probably more to do with the fact that the British ones are particularly well documented and perhaps because we advertise them by going on and on about them because we love a military blunder, do we, the Brits? Oh yeah, it's part of our national character. We revel in failure when it's ours. Um, although, I think some of this reveling is actually disguised boasting because uh, take the charge of the Light Brigade, for instance. Um, that disaster was only really made possible by the fact that the Light Brigade was so flipping excellent. Uh, if they'd had lower morale, their morale would have cracked and they would have just fled back to the, the friendly lines pretty quickly. Or if their horsemanship wasn't excellent, they wouldn't have been able to keep in formation and actually make it all the way down the valley under horrendously heavy fire taking horrendous casualties. So it's like an advert for British excellence that we were able to pull off a disaster like the charge of the light brigade but it, uh, but anyway uh, there are some foreign ones in there as well um, uh, Napoleon not having uh, much fun at all attacking Moscow in 1812 or um, uh, Carai the Romans proving that they were quite fallible actually and um, uh, what else oh the Athenians uh, deciding them in uh, the Peloponnesian War that it was a really good idea to attack Syracuse no it wasn't um, Anyway, so uh, this is a lecture series that you can see for free if you want uh, by going to www.thegreatcoursesplus.com no, yes, stroke Lindy Beige and there you will see a free offer and uh, if you don't like it at, at the end of the, the free offer, well then you can, just, you can just unsubscribe and you will have to pay nothing. So uh, why not um, give it a go? Uh, the Great Courses Plus and there's also a, a link in the description below that you can click to save you all that typing. Um, so uh, back to back attacks. Now um, I would say that the important thing here is who initiates the move because if the man attacking initiates the move and the man defending has not decided to run away but then decides to run away in response to that attack, then maybe he's made a mistake. So there we are, we're squared off against each other and you don't realize it, but I'm planning to charge you. Uh, perhaps I've got a spear and you've got a spear and I'm going to just knock your spear to one side and I'm just gonna come right up into you and just ram with my shield. Or perhaps I'm gonna get right up to you and drop my spear and grab a, a dagger and stab you in the throat. But for whatever reason, I've decided that I'm gonna close range against you. I'm gonna charge as fast as I can. This isn't me creeping in, oh no, this is me pelting at you when I think the time is right. So I pick my moment and I charge. That is the impetus, that's the, that's the initial move here. So then you have a number of options. You could stand your ground, but of course one of the options is that you turn and flee. And yes, if you turn and flee then, I've started the move first, so I think I'm probably going to get a chance to hit you. But because of what I said earlier about the fact that when you do turn to flee, you're not just going to present your back to me, you're going to present some weapons and shields and some defense to me, if, assuming I'm not a complete idiot that is. Um, so though I have a chance to hit you as you run away, I don't think it's a tremendously good one. Um, and this is what I'm going to say to game designers. Now in role play games and war games there is this back attack thing and in oh, so many games um, it's pretty much suicidal to try to, to, try to break off from the enemy. Um, now whose go is it in, in, in the game? If if you have I go, you go, that sort of game, and it's my go and I'm the attacker and I decide to charge, then maybe you could have some rule that says even if in response to that charge the defender uh, runs, there is still a chance he gets hit. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. But if it's your go and you're the defender and you initiate the move, then I would say you can pretty much go get away for free. Uh, if I'm up against two guys, then absolutely, in all the game rules that I've written, if uh, one man is against two, um, uh, essentially if a fighter has a threat next to him that he still has to deal with when someone else breaks and runs away, then that guy can just move off. There's nothing, nothing that, the, uh, the other, that I can do to stop you. Just, just, you just go. But even if there are only two of you, uh, if you initiate the move, I would say that the chances of my getting this this supposed free back attack, this this easy stab to your exposed back, should be infinitesimally tiny. Um, not just because I think that reflects historical reality, but also it makes for better game design because otherwise uh, it you have so you have very few options if turning and fleeing is suicidally stupid. 
um, then no one will ever do it. And so the game becomes tactically much less interesting. Uh, a, a choo a, when you can choose to withdraw and redeploy and so forth, then there's more movement, more. Uh, otherwise, everyone just stands there and slogs, rolling dice. And you end up with the ridiculous situation, which I've come across in many games, where one guy is clearly winning, almost certain to win. The other guy is clearly losing. So, for instance, it might be some uh, game where you, you wear the opponent down by attrition. So I've still got loads of, of hit points or whatever, health left, and you are close to death because I've wounded you so many times. Well, if you stay and carry on fighting me, you're almost certain to die. So what would you do rationally in real life? You'd leg it, wouldn't you? You'd get out of there before you do die. But if the rules of the game say that turning and legging it means that I'm almost certain to kill you, then the, uh, the, the player quickly works out that his odds are actually better if he stands and continues to fight, which no one in reality would ever do, and makes no sense in a game. It also makes for a boring game. So I say back attacks, um, they should not be easy, they should not be free, uh, they, and it does depend quite a lot on who initiates the movement um, so I don't think that they are an historical reality. Back attacks. I just could you just expunge them from your mind. <laughs>